You, you want to see something really scary? You bet. Really? Yeah. Okay, this is this is really really scary now. I trust you. <laughs> Was that for a scream, boys and girls? Let me start by being straightforward. This guy, the Crib Keeper, scared the shit out of me as a child. So much that, as my mother recounted, when I was a baby, I'd rush out the room after the first lightning strike of the ominous Steadicam model intro, which still stands out to me as one of the great TV openings, and wait until he wasn't going to appear again to come back and watch the story with her. To the point that when I found out one of my college classmates was the son of one of the Crib Keeper's puppeteers, my reaction was to tell him, dude, your dad is responsible for my nightmares, to the point that I could not look at even a fucking picture of the guy without having a heart attack, to the point that I hated hearing his laugh because it would immediately bring back his disfigured face. Yes, I watched Tales from the Crypt with my mom as a baby. It says a lot about my raising that I grew up on Tales from the Crypt and Sin City as well as other questionable material. So I'm a violent psychopath. Next thing you're gonna tell me that because Abba is one of my favorites and Freddie Mercury is one of my heroes, that I'm gay. I'm not gay, mom. Please, don't freak out. Speaking of comics, the show is based on an astoundingly short-lived comic that was published by EC in the early 50s after having premiered its three host characters, the Vault Keeper, the Old Witch, and a more human Crypt Keeper, in their crime series. However, the series and its sister tales, The Vault of Horror and The Haunt of Fear, were cancelled by publisher Bill Gaines after complaints from parents, the clergy, and teachers about how the horror comics would add to delinquency and kill brain cells and bullshit like that, climaxing with an absolute farce of a congressional hearing similar to the PMRC. I'd be interested to see what toys your kids ever had. Why would you be interested? Just as a point of interest in this... Uh, well, come on over to the house, I'll show them to you. <laughs> they kind of pulled that shit with comics in general, but I guess due to the macabre nature of the comics, the old-timing squares actually won out this time. As a result, the comics are extremely rare to find, and it sucks because I would really like to get my hands on the collection. I'm afraid that's not good enough. You'd have to be a bite more versatile. Apparently it wasn't enough to actually kill the interest in horror comics, as the legacy that these books that were barely able to stick around was able to influence big horror names like George Romero and Stephen King, the two of them teaming up to make their own homage film in 1982 called Creepshow, which was a surprise hit. However, it wasn't until Robert Zemeckis and Joel Silver became interested in the potential for these comics that in 1989 they got the go-ahead for a TV series on unadulterated HBO primetime based on stories from all three EC comic series. Hosted by this fucking asshole, who I'm seeing so many times making this midnight video that I swear I will not be sleeping even by dawn. The creators swear he was meant to be comic relief, but I call bullshit on account of his deliberately bad puns. Scary is as scary does. The Crypt Keeper, largely built by Kevin Yeager and voiced by John Kassir, was not only not funny, but he holds it down as the most realistic animatronic I have seen yet in TV or film. I mean, yeah, the opening puppet looks like a broken carnival attraction, but look at his movement in the bookends. It's natural, he fucking glides, and every facet of his face moves. Look at those bloodshot eyes with the most satanic enthusiasm staring right at your skull. How would that not be terrifying to baby me? It didn't help how hugely popular the series got quick, with a censored version being broadcasted on Fox, several spin-offs shockingly aimed for children, two feature-length movies, compilation albums, and even 15 minutes hosting Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights, but by now I think it's safe to say the show has died out in semi-obscurity, and considering how the quality of each episode would go from amazing to bad to ant and terrible and so on, it's not surprising. I mean, it really wasn't even a consistent show outright. Two episodes in mine are outright in a different playing field from horror, and many of them are more grisly than really intent on delivering scares. But that grisliness does essentially comment on the whole basis of Tales from the Crypt as a series, and why it made perfect sense for it to have free reign on HBO. To state it bluntly, Tales from the Crypt is the most pornographic show I have ever seen brought to television yet. 
I know how people are all about their Game of Thrones and Spartacus, but they don't touch the excess of gore, sex, and just really smutty reasons to have really smutty material on the TV screen that Tales from the Crypt elicited. Don't get me wrong, I don't say pornographic the way Tipper Gore says pornographic, nor do I say it in the way, say, a 12-year-old who who found his dad's Playboys would say it. I'm just noting how much the show had an infatuation with something really, really dirty that the audience would probably feel they shouldn't be watching, like their parents would be looking over them disapprovingly. It kind of brings it full circle that a show based on a comic wrongfully accused of being without merit beyond exploitation outright uses exploitation as its merit in a TV show medium. But maybe I'm just giving you too much credit. In the meantime, it was also pretty outstanding how the series rose and then fell. It brought some surprisingly neat tricks into the idea of television beyond just how far they could go. Hi, Mom! <laughs> These weren't always TV directors that passed by. Richard Donner gave it a go, William Friedkin, Walter Hill, a whole boatload of established film directors went to the show with some story to tell. Hell, even Arnold Schwarzenegger gave it a go. You want to give that 90 pound corpse for the rest of your death? Pumping. I tell the story. Robert Zemeckis in particular seemed to take a great amount of fun with it, such as making a whole episode star Humphrey Bogart posthumously using superimposition and reflections. And some of these stories were, in the end, very terrifying. Not to mention the stars, ranging from Roger Daltrey to Don Rickles to Brad Pitt to Slash to Joe Pesci. Oh, too sexy for my hair. Too sexy for this earring. Too sexy. Uh, too sexy for this house. Too sexy. Hey, honey! So many popular actors saw the potential and thought it would be fun to appear on a one-shot horror story. Like I said, in the end the show did fall almost as quickly as the comics did. Popularity died out in 1996 and the production was suddenly moved to the UK for the final season before they gave the show the final acts as a mercy killing. At least, we had some great works like my favorite episodes that I'd recommend to any newcomers. Forever, Amber Gray. You murderer. Abra, Kadabra, and all through the house. The new arrival, Morning Mess. But it's very obvious that over the years, Tales from the Crypt has been a huge presence to me, and if I can't review it proper, and I really don't think I can without doing it on an episode by episode basis that nobody has the energy for, I may as well just give it a scream out while I can, and possibly a representation to other fans of the series. So here's to you, horror hooligans. If ever the newbies feel like checking out this show, please, I insist you treat yourself. It's kind of an exploitative side of television that we don't get to see short of reality TV today. Now that's fucking scary. Still hungry for dessert? I hope you like cannibal soup. It's mmm mmm good! <laughs> Hello boys and ghouls! Have you subscribed to Movie Motor Breath on WordPress and began following him on Facebook and Twitter? No? Well, then you'd better get a head start before someone leaves you with no heads at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I can't fucking do that.